group of interest that is ants. And as Thomas said, ants are very difficult to identify just with photographs. So once I started, uh, once Thomas started this ants of India Facebook group, a lot of people used to put photographs of ants <coughs> on Facebook, and then people used to tag me or someone else to identify them. And a lot of times have been the case that I could identify them just because a lot of features were not clear on them. Uh, so hopefully in the next one hour session when I have with you all, uh, I'll probably also tell you how to photograph ants so that at least from the photographs I can probably you know identify or all of us could identify up to genus level at least. So in this presentation I'll quickly run through some basics of uh, ants. So this is very general scientific stuff which I just put in for the sake of putting it, nothing else. But then yeah, this is something interesting is that uh, ants are usually very closely related to wasps and you would see that that image on the left and that on the top look almost similar. Of course that also is an ant and that is not an ant. So a lot of times people post images like this which are confusing and uh, you know you don't know what is what and then people assume something as ant and something as a wasp or things like that. So I the concept of putting up this was to show that a lot of things are very difficult and ambiguous uh, as such. So <laughs> the first thing which I would like to you know, say that ants are very different from wasps to which they are closely related to with these three features. One is the ant's antenna is bent like my elbow like this and they have this node is called the petiole which is very easily observable even on a small ant which is walking running around on a table if you carefully focus you will see these two features the bent antenna and the petiole but then yes there are exceptions to that again uh, which you cannot observe of course these features are there but it will be misleading to you in certain cases so whatever i say to you please take it with a pinch of salt because biology is a science of exception you will always have exceptions in all this so i am just giving you the general feature and then yeah this is uh, in a typical colony, this is what uh, ants are made up of, you know, there will be a queen, there will be daughters, workers, so there is a general arrangement, I guess that's not of interest right now. So what is interesting to observe is these three kinds of ants, they belong to the same species, but you see the queen is large, then you have the male, the drones which is a slightly smaller version of the queen and then you have the worker. So the queens and the males are winged and the worker is not winged. So this is the main feature and then what happens is after the queen and the male mate, the queen sheds off its wing and then it's flightless. So a lot of times we see these queens come to our tube lights and bulbs when it rains and then you know there are termites also which come along with it. So a lot of times people get confused whether a termite is an ant or an ant is a termite. So that is another thing which I would like to address later on. So this is a very complicated stuff, I'm not going through this. Yeah. So I actually made a very simple version of a taxonomic key for ants up till subfamily level. Uh, mind you, the taxonomy of ants is a bit complicated. A lot of us work on that. I, I know Vedashan sir is here, Anirudh is there. So it's very difficult to identify ants as such. Uh, and the starting is really difficult, the going gets tough, but as you keep on practicing it gets very easy. Uh, so I actually made a small, very simple version of a taxonomy key for ants based on my own experience of working with them for some time now. So which we will be using later on in our sessions to try to use a key and trying to identify them up to subfamily level. So I thought I would show you how it is, how it works. Yeah. So. Uh, when Thomas first contacted me, he said 10 species, 10 minutes, common ones, show it to all. Let everyone get introduced to some 10 common species. So let me quickly show you 10 common ants, which you will see invariably in your house or anywhere you go. The first one is Camponatus compressis. Mind you, a lot of uh, ants don't have common names or we have introduced or invented common names for them. So a lot of people have different common names for the same ant in different places. Uh, when I had written to Alex Wild, uh, photographer and a scientist, uh, no, I told him that's a Godzilla ant. He was like, my God, what is Godzilla ant? That is a movie's name. Then he said, no, that's Carpenter ant. And then he said, stop using common names. It doesn't make sense. 
stick to scientific names. But then still for the Indian context and for uh, considering that this is a very informal uh, gathering where uh, people from different backgrounds have come, I would still you know use certain common names which are in common and general use, popular use. So this is a carpenter and I leave it at that. It's called Camponotus compressius. It's very common, especially in the monsoons. If you see these people will come out, these girls actually, these girls will come out and then once they bite you, they won't even leave you. They will see to that they cut your skin and bleed you. That is how bad they are. <laughs> then is this very destructive fellow, Anoplolepis gracilepis, is the crazy yellow ant. It's called crazy because once you disturb them, they just start shaking like this, like they're dancing literally. And it's an invasive ant. Um, I, I, I'm not sure from where it has originated. Uh, but then uh, a lot of places this has invaded, it has actually destroyed a lot of local uh, insect fauna there and it's literally taking over a lot of forest lands in terms of the indigenous species of insects being harmed by this, the Anoplolepis. And there are some studies from Christmas Island where they show that this fellow is really very destructive. Then this is our most famous uh, weaver ant, the Asian weaver ant. Everyone must have seen this ant, especially while climbing mango trees to steal mangoes from the neighbor's house. And you would have seen this leaves folded together with uh, some kind of silk binding it together and there will be these red colored girls running all around. They have very sharp teeth. Once they bite you again, won't leave you and they will go further ahead, bite you, spray formic acid on it, totally destroy you. Then is this, uh, I would say, hunchback and I would say lesser hunchback and because there is someone else who will be called as greater hunchback and whatever. So this is uh, the Mirmicaria brunia, again a very common garden and uh, you know it nests mostly in tree holes or somewhere uh, or at the base of a tree. You will see these huge mounds, especially in Bangalore, just after the first rains you will see this. If there is a tree, there will be this huge mound around the tree, you know, uh, full mound and there will be this huge ants which will be going around. So that is this, Mirmicaria brunea. They uh, usually tend to aphids and caterpillars or butterf butterflies. And <coughs> then is the other crazy ant, this is another crazy ant. It's an invasive, it's Paratrachina longiconis. This is another very common ant, you will always see it in your house, these black small ants which climb on you and you get tickles. So this is that ant. You know, it will nicely tickle you, it won't bite you. And a lot of people like this ant because it doesn't bite you. So, yeah, again this is an invasive species, you know, it has colonized all of uh, uh, India as such and, you know, it's again, yeah, not an Indian species. Then another very familiar ant, uh, in Marathi it's called Ghaniari because it stinks literally. In the sense, you stamp on it, you squeeze it, you eat it or whatever, it starts emitting a very foul smell. And then, you know, and this is popularly called a ghost ant because once it comes in, you don't know how it goes out. Because they're so small and yet they can effectively make small holes in your sugar packet, get inside, uh, eat whatever they want to eat and get out of it. You won't even know from where they came and where they went. They're the MI6 of the ant world. And then another nasty girl from the ant world, again by stealing neighbor's mangoes, you would have been stung by her. This is the arboreal bicolored ant, that's what I would like to call her. But that's the Tetraponera rufonigra, has a very potent sting, it's considered to be one of the most painful stings in the insect world and once it stings, you will, your, wherever it has stung, you will get swollen up and you will have a really tough time dealing with it. So yeah, that is one. And then the other common, very common ant. So you, you, usually what happens is when someone comes up to me and asks me about ant, they say red ant, black ant, brown ant, big ant, small ant. And the next question is, how do I kill them? So I wanted to say this in the beginning, I just it just left my mind. So seeing this, I remembered that because this is another very pugnacious ant. No, it will bite you. It will, you know, this, is, this is very common, this is called the Monomorium pharaonis, another invasive species. You know, it's, it's literally everywhere in all our houses and then they have this, you know, uh, single colony will have multiple queens in them so they rapidly expand. So you can see a, a young female with a entourage of workers and there's one taking a lava there. Okay, uh, this is an ant which is very uh, dear to me 
and I like this handle. This is a chromatogaster. It's <coughs> called a pagoda and because it makes cotton nests which look something like this. If you have it, I'm sure all of us must have seen this. On trees there will be these leaves stuck together and you know you have this uh, structure there and this is made by this chromatogaster. Commonly it's called the acrobat and uh, as you can see it's doing some kind of a acrobatic movement there, putting its abdomen on top. And it's also called a valentine ant because it has a nice heart shaped abdomen. So you can probably gift it to your girlfriend if you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's also a group, a genus of my interest, and I'm trying, working on this genus because there's a lot of uh, mystery behind this genus. And then there is this ant. Of course, this is not a very good example of what I want to tell you. There's a group of ants called harvester ants. And in Bangalore, it is very common. If you would have seen after uh, monsoons, there will be this one small hole and this line of ants will be moving and as they keep moving there will be a white trail which is left behind. A white color line will be left behind on the ground and you will see them collecting these grass seeds and bringing things back and there is a hole in the ground and this husks of grasses which they will be surrounding the nest, uh, around their nest. So this is a very common and it's, this group is called harvester ant as such. So there are many uh, genus and species which belong to this harvester ant. This is of course a uh, Carabara diversa. Uh, but then the best, uh, the most common ones in uh, Bangalore are the monomoriums, which also look similar. So if you see this image closely, there is a big ant, then there is a small ant, there is a smaller ant. All of them belong to the same species, same colony, and probably all of them are sisters and of the same group. I mean, same age group. Yeah, so what we'll do in the one hour session later is identify specimens. So I have some uh, preserved dry specimens and I see some good microscopes here. So we'll probably keep the specimens and the microscope and I'll show you how to identify them based on the keys I had shown you previously. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.